Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, friends. Welcome back. My little sidekick over here wanted to turn the recorder on. Okay, welcome to Word Wednesday. That's right. It's Thursday. Life happens, right, Millie? Yeah. Yes, Word Wednesday did not happen yesterday, so we're doing Word Wednesday on Thursday. Because grace, people. Lots and lots and lots of grace. Really a bunch of so... For Word Wednesday, I wanted to talk about a book that I've been reading. I, like I shared in a previous vlog, I stopped going to my Bible study because it just was not my season for it. Bible studies are amazing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back into one. But for right now, it was best for me to say no to a Bible study and yes to being home. So when we were at the library last week, I went through like the Christian book section, just looking for something. I wanted a Bible study or a book that I could read through, something to kind of keep me accountable at home while I'm on my own, because it's easy to, it's easy to say, well, I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll just do it tomorrow. And a month has gone by of I'll just do it tomorrow, and you haven't been reading scripture at all, right? It's easy to do. Am I the only one? I hope not. Um, so I found this book. It's called Praying with Paul. My hair's in it. Praying with Paul by D.A. Carson. I had no idea what it was, but it stuck out to me because my prayer life is one that's kind of been on my heart lately that I'm not, um, it's not where it should be. I'm not as strong and consistent of a prayer as I should be. Prayer warrior. I want to be a prayer warrior. Like I want to be just constantly talking to God and I want to hear him and I want to know what he's saying to me and um, I want to be able to go to him on others behalf and just um, just be there like I just I just want to be a prayer warrior and I'm not um, and so this book really stuck out to me like I, I was like I'm gonna give this one a shot and so I brought it home and started reading it and the first chapter I'm like ah this is good this is so good um, so the way it's put together is the person, the um, author, will start the chapter. Like, so chapter number one is lessons from a school of prayer. And then it's broken down into points, like point number one. And it's bold and it's highlighted and all his information, like, is under each point, which I just love because if I get interrupted, I'm like, okay, all I need to do is remember I'm on point four and then I can start there. Um, for a mom that's got a bunch of littles or not even a bunch of littles, just anybody who's busy that might get interrupted. I think that's, I think that's great. And so then at the end of each chapter, he has questions related to what we just talked about, which I love because sometimes you have trouble like, okay, I like what I just read, but I'm, I don't know. What did I just read? So I love, oh, good, bud. So I love, um, the questions at the end. So what I did was I got my little journal, um, that I showed you guys earlier and I just started taking notes in chapter one because I just was like oh this is so good um, and one of the things that I wrote down that really struck me is we should delight in prayer I love that word delight we should delight in prayer we get to meet with the living God that we get to go before the throne of grace like pr prayer should be something that we are excited to do that we feel charged up to do that we get to sit in God's presence and talk to him and he talks to us and um, that should be something that we're excited about and not feel dread about having to do or guilt because we haven't done it. And then the verse he has to go with that is James 4, 2, and 3. It says, you do not, uh, you do not have because you do not ask. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend time or spend what you get on your pleasures. So I loved that because, um, I mean, what we want are, is it, what kind of motive do we have for why we're praying, for what we're praying? Um, and so some of the things that stuck out to me in chapter one was to pray through scripture and to tie prayers to scripture. And I love that because that means I need to be in the word. I need to know what scripture says to be able to tie my prayers to that. That's something I want to teach my children. I want to pray scripture over my children and I want to teach them how to tie their prayers in with what they already know God wants for us. We already know what God wants for us because it's in the Bible. So if we can align our hearts with that scripture, they can they can be on the already on the right track. They've already got a leg up, right? We already know it's biblical if we can align it to scripture. Um, 
It says, Christian prayer is marked decisively by petition because this form of prayer discloses the true state of affairs. It reminds the believer that God is the source of all good and that human beings are utterly dependent and stand in need of everything. Love that. A wise father is more interested in a relationship with his son than merely giving him things. God wants a relationship for us. He, he doesn't want us to just pray when we need something. Um, he's not interested in that. He's not interested in just handing out stuff when we need it. Um, he wants a relationship with us. And the way to have a relationship is to be consistent with prayer. Be consistent in the word and be consistent with prayer. And that is something that I want to teach my kids. And I honestly don't think that I've done a great job with teaching them. You don't agree? No? Um, so... I think in another vlog we'll talk about how we pray, how I pray with the kids and that kind of thing, but um, I think this book will probably also, after I work through it, will um, change how we pray. The other point that I liked was pray until you pray. Pray until you pray. And I first started that, I was like, I don't even know what that means, but he made really good points. Have you ever been like really frustrated and you're like, the last thing I want to do is pray right now. And you start off and you're like, dear Jesus, thanks for this day this day well the sun is shining thanks for thanks for the sun being out and then well I was able to stop and get the Starbucks on the way thank you for the Starbucks like you start out frustrated and you're not really praying and then once you it's just just praying and being in conversation with God like just softens your heart I can't tell you how many times I've prayed for a kid who has totally frustrated me and I'm like let's just pray right now I'm so frustrated we're gonna pray and at first I'm like thank you for so and so I'm so glad this person's in our family because they make me laugh and it's a joy to be around them and like as you start praying <laughs> you really like your heart softens and you do remember why you're praying what you're praying or who you're praying for I don't know does that make sense or is that like I might be the only one that does that but um so I'm really excited to read the book. I'm excited to keep notes about it. One of the questions on the back was, let me flip to it. I really like the questions in the back. They're very, um, uh, they get you thinking. So the first one was list the positive and negative things you've learned about praying by listening to others pray. Immediately, a lady that, um, used to go to our school, popped into my brain, because she is just, a, you okay? This pan is hot, okay? Be careful. Um, she is just a prayer warrior. Like, if she, you say you have a need, she will stop right there, and she will pray over you, everything that you need, and probably things that you didn't even think you needed. What? What? We want some mermaid Barbie. Mermaid Barbie? Yes. No. Please. Um, hold on. Hang on. Okay. Okay, we have friends coming over. I want you to go clean up your rooms first, and then we can watch a show. It's Friendsgiving today, y'all, so we've got sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, turkey's already done. we got a lot of stuff going on. Mommy, how many more minutes until they come over? Two hours. Okay, so... Immediately I thought of this woman that she's just a prayer warrior and I want so much to have the integrity and the um, like the, the line to Jesus she has. She just is like, oh, she's amazing. And so um, I listed the things that I loved about hearing her pray, like what, what made her prayers so effective and so emotional and... Um, so I listed those things. And then there's other people that I've heard pray that, uh, you know, there's things that I didn't like about their prayers. Um, and so I listed those too. And the, it's like a running list of like things that when I say I'm going to pray for somebody, I can remember, you know, these, these are the things that I want to do. This is, these are the things that have affected me and touched me when somebody has prayed for me. And that's what I want to do for other people. So the questions in the back of the um, chapters are really great. Like I said, I'm only in chapter two. Um, I'm through chapter, through chapter two. Um, so I haven't gotten that far, but I'm going to keep you updated. Um, little snippets that I'm learning. Hopefully I'll continue to like the book. I haven't, I don't know anything about the author. I didn't look up like online reviews or anything about the book. I'm just going to read through it and make my own opinions. 
and um, I'll just keep you posted. So I hope this is helpful. I would love for anybody who wants to maybe get this book and read through it with me, I would love to have a discussion, love to have somebody to um, hook up with and talk about, like, what did you think about when he said such and such? Or, you know, how did you answer this question? I would love that. Um, so if anybody is interested in that, please let me know. I think that would be really a really cool thing to do. And um, since today's Thursday, we'll be back tomorrow for the Friday Five. I hope you all are having a great day, and we'll see you next time.